Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Lori Anderson, host for Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio broadcast and contributor for FreedomOutpost.com. I joined Eric Hughes Jones of Courtroom Observers who was hosting the American Awakening for Michael Herzog last night on the RBN network. I am going to provide for you the hour that I was on and I hope you enjoy it. I will also leave just links in the description box below if you'd like to hear the entire show. Topics of discussion were Chris Cave and it was also the Bundy Ranch rally that is upcoming with several prominent figures that are going to be attending including Congressman Ron Paul, Roger Stone and many others. And we discussed how patriots are being rounded up and it is time to learn what the courts are doing. Uh, we also go over the actual definition in U.S. Code of torture and how they are doing so within the private prisons as well as in the courts. I hope you enjoy the second half of the radio show and as always I will leave links in the description box below. If you like please thumbs up and share. Thank you, God bless you and enjoy the show. Bums a dime in your prime Didn't you? People called, say beware dawn You're bound to fall You thought they were all just Kidding you? You used Welcome to Welcome back, my friend. Thank you for joining us on the American Awakening. This is Eric, the Freedom Screamer. We kind of put the John Lamb thing to the side burner tonight um, just because this is a really... This is actually really a you know, cause for celebration, but I don't like to get too giddy and all, you know, because none of us are free. Chris has other battles to fight. It's not over yet. I don't want anybody to be complacent. I want people to still support Chris and his cause. And if you go to courtroomwatch.com or .org, either one will get you there. That's courtroomwatch, C-O-U-R-T-R-O-O-M, watch, courtroomwatch.com or .org. You'll see there's a recent, there hasn't been a lot of activity on the website except for Chris's. I wanted it focused to stay on his matter, so, and I believe it's unless the, uh, the, unless certain entities have interfered with our stuff, which they do have time to time, uh, Chris's phone blitz should still be up there. So if you want to call and make your, make your desire known that Chris be left alone and to live his life and to broadcast, uh, you know, on the on the airwaves and do whatever he needs to do. I mean, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Hello, every one of these judges took an oath, and so I urge people to speak, loan their voice to a, to these egregious situations. And Chris is particularly egregious um, when they start using the psychiatric hospital to lock up patriots, and it's obvious and overt that that's going on. Um, I mean that really. That's that's as bad. That's the war, as bad as it gets. And people need to really, really come to the awakening that this is going on. It's going on in large numbers all over the nation, everywhere I turn, in every state. They're taking patriots down and making their life just absolutely, completely miserable for these obscure, arbitrary, made-up garbage things. I know a lot of you listeners out out there now have had have had. Uh, you know, the, the, the witch's court trying to suck you in for whatever, you know, for whatever obscure, ridiculous violation. And Chris was just talking about before the break about the arbitrary nature of how they just, you know, and this is what came out of the Judicial Act of 1789. Uh, before the ink was dry in the Constitution, they had already set up the Judicial Act of 1789, which, and if you read it, You'll see, it'll go on and on and all this legal speak, and then it'll just say, or whatever the judge wants to do, or whatever procedural, uh, you, you know, requirements are set forth by the court administrator, blah, 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 blah. And there's that term administrator again, heavily communistic term. Uh, and with that, I want to bring in Lori Anderson. We are very blessed tonight to have Chris and Lori. So anyway, tonight's a happy night. 
because Chris is out. Chris is more or less free. I mean, he's not. The system is still. He's got a case to fight in in, in court, but he's at least. Uh, they've let him out of the psychiatric hospital. He's back on the air with us tonight. Chris in Las Vegas. We're really blessed. Thank thank the Lord for uh, Chris's release, and thanks to everybody who called. Um, it was very helpful to have the only. I mean, really, the bottom line is when you get in these situations, you can file the best documents in the world. And Chris, it was, it is. But without the public pressure, they'll scoop you up and stick you away, and 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 there you'll sit unless people really bitch and complain. Forgive my language, but this is why putting a couple of hundred phone calls onto the witch's court or the sheriff, who's the chief law enforcement officer, or chief peace officer, I should say, there should be no law enforcement in a free republic. And of course, the vicar general and the judicial vicar. Who's judicial do you think he's vicaring? Look it up. It's online. There'll be one in your account. The judicial vicar. Or the vicar general. Send them copies of your paperwork. But anyway, <laughs> with that, we're going to bring in Lori Anderson. I hear some interesting funky noises in the background. Somebody's got a call coming in. Hey, Lori Anderson, thanks for joining us. Are you with us, sweetheart? I am. How is everybody doing this evening? It is wonderful. Well, pretty to be good. Here we got Chris, and I'm very happy that Chris is not still sitting in that psychiatric hospital. Absolutely. Um, that's just a that's scary thing, and and we appreciate all the publicity that everybody, including you, put on his, his situation. Oh, absolutely. We have to stand together, united, and um, you know, we're, I'm really tickled that finally. They released him, but the reality is they really didn't have justification to hold him in the first place, and that is what we fight. We we fight for individual rights, the unalienable rights of the people that are confirmed in the Bill of Limitations, uh, otherwise known by the public as the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is not a Bill of Rights. It is limits the federal government and people um are awakening to that fact and i'm thankful for that i am thankful for that and i am thankful that chris is now um even though he still has uh the issues to fight he is able to actually uh get the information and stuff that he needs which he is a wealth of knowledge and um but when you are sitting there and and don't have access to uh the means and the the cases you need and the things that you need in order to print up or or even something as simple as typing up um a motion on your own behalf oh exactly know? how do you defend yourself when you're locked up and they put to you you know tom lacavaro i don't think right. he's still in solitary but he was for months how are you going to get a pen and pencil or make calls or defend your i mean what a dead what a stuck dead end nightmare um mm-hmm. once again we all have to rely on the everybody out there to take mm-hmm. up these cases and Absolutely. be interested in them. Keep calling and send emails and send letters to the court. Send a habeas corpus on behalf of somebody who's incarcerated. You can't mm-hmm. get in any trouble for sending a habeas. They may not honor it, but they might if you send in enough of them. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had cases where we sent in dozens, and it, it absolutely did make a difference. They brought in one guy a day early. And let him go, and I know they weren't going to be letting him go any time if it weren't for the 25 or 30 habeas corpuses that were sitting on the judge's desk when he, well, I didn't think it was a he, not a she, got there. It was a Kansas mm-hmm. case, but I've seen it work there. I've seen it work, uh, seemed to well, help the Antilly situation. Right, and a lot of um, the situation, people do fear. They, they fear of being charged with practicing law without a license you can send in a habeas as a next friend they can deny that habeas like you said or they can honor it but it is not a situation when you're sending in a habeas it is when a person and a lot of times the the de facto will use the case well you can't use that because they have to be disabled look up the definition of disabled in Black's Law 5th edition. If they are incarcerated, they're considered disabled in Black's Law. So don't let that fool you. You you can use that. But I do have some good news tonight, Eric. Okay. I do. I need, um, yep, more good news. That's great. Yes, and, you know, we have been, uh, whether it be 
this show or the previous show where we were on for Resurrect the Republic um, RTR Truth Radio broadcast. We have been covering the situation, of course, at nauseum with the Bundy situation, with the land grabs, with the unlawful incarceration, courtroom observers, and, and everybody else is, is on the edge of their seat. Many of the independent investigative journalists have been locked up. Tom has been locked up. Uh, Pete Sanchez locked up. Gary Hunt locked up. Um, the other gentleman that was on the front lines in Oregon and uh, Michael... Um, what was his last name, Eric? Do you remember his last name? Which guy? He was the one that was on the front lines in Oregon reporting, and that's all he did. He he just reported it live. He didn't do anything. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I apologize. It. I do apologize for I know who you're talking about. I do apologize for not having that guy's name uh, on the we'll tip of my it. tongue. Um, yeah, we'll get it. Um, I wanted to say O'Connell. Was it O'Connell or something? Michael O'Connell? No, I'm sorry. It was, uh, uh, no, I can't. No, I'm just uh, reaching for straws right now. No, I, I do apologize, but I know who you're talking well, about. And with the yeah. courts taking people down, oh, there's a war on independent media. We got some oh, stuff yeah. published Absolutely. on the courtroom watch, that, uh, the Gary Hunt case. Uh, read those documents. That tells right. it all. And those documents were public, documents publicly made. None of yeah. that was like, Top secret stuff that was national security and right. you know it's sworn totally. to secrecy, yeah. work like that. Well, you know, and the 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 thing is, they want to take down the independent investigative journalists. They want to take down these journalists because then the the false news, like CNN, uh, MSNBC, and the different ones like that, they can't get by with their narrative. And as you can see, James O'Keefe once again. Um, the gift that just keeps on giving is Veritas. They got the undercover. A lot of individuals, of course, um, have seen it. Some individuals have not. If you have not, go to Project Veritas on YouTube. Get this information. It's amazing. They got undercover footage of CNN admitting that the Russia Trump narrative was bull blank. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say it on air. But anyway, back to the good news. You know, we've been trying for a very long time to get some really big names involved with the egregious injustices that have been going on against the Patriots, have been against the independent investigative journalists, um, the uh, indefinite detention basically of these political prisoners under the guise that they're a threat to society when that's a joke. Anybody who has followed this knows better. And originally when the Bundy standoff happened in 2014 in Nevada, um, you know, you had a lot of people speaking out, like Judge Andrew Napolitano spoke out about the egregious overreach of the federal government and how they handled it and uh, the different things like that. So in between there, of course, a lot of that died down of the support of the big names. But you did have some assembly people that were um, kicking in and, and standing up for these ranchers. Well, now I have some really amazing news for everybody. So um, I want to share with you Lord Christopher Monckton. If you don't know who that gentleman is, he is known worldwide. Um and especially in Australia. But Lord Christopher Monckton has found out um, about the Lavoie Fenneca murder. And uh, he actually, I guess, was able to meet uh, Miss Fenneca and got the information and the stuff like that. And an InfoWars reporter by the name of Millie Weaver, she spoke Come with... Come here. She spoke with Lord Christopher Monckton, and the amazing stand he is taking, I think, needs to be heard around the globe, because this is the type of coverage we need with people like this. These are people that have the ear of President Donald Trump, and uh, after I share that clip with you, I will bring some more amazing news of some really heavy hitters it, that are coming up and it's going to be July the 15th I'll give you all the details so if you don't have a pen and paper ready please get a pen and paper ready 
because if you're in Las Vegas, Nevada on July 15th, you're going to want to go to what I'm going to let you know about in just a few minutes. Mike, if you could get the clip ready. This is um, uh, Millie Weaver. She is interviewing um, Lord Christopher Monckton, and they're speaking about Lavoie Fenicum murder and I want to give uh, props to Infowars as well as Millie Weaver for getting this and um, enjoy the clip everyone Millie Weaver reporting for Infowars.com we're here in Bozeman, Montana at the Red Pill Expo I'm here with Lord Christopher Monckton who has been amazing you have given some amazing speeches all throughout this expo well, I think it was outstanding, perhaps the most outstanding speech of the whole conference was that by Jeanette Finnegan, whose uh, husband, Lavoie, was brutally murdered by being shot several times in the back on the flimsy and entirely insubstantial uh, excuse that he was reaching for a gun when he had repeated it, made it clear to them that he was not going to do any such thing. This was an organised, carefully planned, premeditated murder, and those guilty of it were the governor of California, the governor of Oregon, the FBI field offices in both those places, the sheriff's office uh, of Southern Oregon, and also Mr. Comey of the FBI. And if I have anything to do with it, they will all shortly be getting writ for a RICO prosecu prosecution because they conspired, we may even have to bring Mr. Obama into this as well, they conspired together to kill a manifestly, entirely harmless and innocent man. It is unbelievably horrible to hear about this tragedy that the Finnegan family really has had to endure and it has been an inspirational speech with what she said but it just speaks to the fact that we must drain the swamp in this country or else our ourselves our own lives are at risk it could have been any of us it could be anyone that wants to stand up against a tyrannical government and that is why this must be stopped i mean the the obama regime will be seen to have been the most corrupt in the history of the united states he presided over this it was he and comey together who decided and you can see this still on the fbi's website which has not yet been drained of this filth that anyone who professes to be a Christian or quotes the Bible or quotes the US Constitution or when stopped at a traffic light it asks for why he has been stopped and on what authority they are to be regarded not merely regarded as potential terrorists but reported to the joint terrorist task forces of which there are now 103 I can reveal exclusively tonight this is breaking news plans are already in hand lawyers are being consulted funds are being raised we started here tonight and one million dollars is going to be raised to pay for this RICO prosecution and my advice in insofar as I know juries is that any jury seeing the facts that I have already unearthed from looking at the uh, published materials that are available would be bound to convict those responsible for what was undoubtedly not a lawful killing but an outrageous murder by the state we see this situation and we're not seeing that national outcry do you think it's because the media has had a a, a hand in kind of demonizing the people of the Oregon standoff let me tell you what happened at the press conference held by the sheriff in southern Oregon uh, after the murder there were various unbelievably tame uncritical and unquestioning journalists there and the sheriff said one very extraordinary thing among a number of rather lame excuses he said that Lavoie Finnegan was wanted for federal offences. Now, not one of those journalists said what federal offences. He hadn't committed any. And what also they should have asked, I would have asked, I used to be a journalist like you, and you, you go on asking questions until you yes. get the answer. I've seen how good you are at it. You're an absolute star. But what I would have asked is, may we please see the warrant that had been issued for his arrest? Because without a warrant for his arrest, it was unlawful to put up a roadblock and stop him. 
Do you know, there was no warrant for his arrest at the time when he was stopped. They were going to get it the next morning. That was their excuse. Let me tell you something else, breaking news. Because when I was on with Alex Jones some months ago, he very kindly has me on about once a month, and here, here I am again turning up like a bad penny. <laughs> I was talking about this episode, the Finnegan murder, and I said it was very clear to me that Mr Comey and Mr Obama's policy of treating Christians and people who quote the Bible and people who quote the Constitution, people even who quote decisions of the Supreme Court, are to be regarded and reported as though they were terrorists or potential terrorists. That policy which led to the death of Lavoy Finnegan very directly, a policy which has not yet been reversed, though I am going to see to it that it is reversed, I transmitted a short report of this to the administration's transition team. And I said, you need to watch for this one because it's going to come back and bite government generally in the backside unless you are aware of it. And I said to them privately what I then said, and you can go back and check this, I said this publicly on the air, it would be necessary for the sake of Mr Trump distancing himself from what had been done that he should fire Mr Comey, both privately to the administration's transition team and then publicly on Alex Jones. Weeks later, he was gone. So don't you think, you who committed this crime, that because I am from across the pond... I don't have sufficient influence to make a difference to what is going to happen to you now. From this day on, when this broadcast is drawn to your attention, you will never again sleep easy in your beds, and very soon you will not be sleeping in beds, you will be sleeping in cots by a tin toilet in a small cell shared with somebody that you might not normally wish to know in, on your social circuit. So be very clear on this. Mr Comey has already gone. I called for it. I briefed the administration. He went. I'm not saying, of course, that I was the sole reason for that, but I've no doubt that my little fourpence worth was added into the balance along with other evidences of his wrongdoing. But we are going to continue to press forward with this matter. We are not going to leave Mrs Finnecombe unhelped and abandoned. We are also going to look into the way in which the Bureau of Land Management has been willfully failing to comply with federal regulations that require them forthwith to ensure that Mrs Finnecombe is given the right to continue to ranch the government-owned land that her late husband uh, had. And at the moment they're still dithering, they won't reply to correspondence, they won't even uh, say that they're refusing her. They're deliberately just delaying it in the hope that she will run out of money, go bankrupt and go, go away. Now that kind of communistic practice is unacceptable. That too is going to be stopped, I'm glad to say that one of the great legal foundations has realised what an outrage this is. They are now going to help her with that matter and so the Bureau of Land Management and let me tell you this your very existence is under threat as a result of your mistreatment of Mrs Finnegan. My advice to you is this that if within two weeks of this broadcast you have failed to make sure that she is told that she is entitled to continue the land lease that was originally in favour of her late husband then the Bureau of Land Management will from then on be at very grave risk indeed of being abolished and of all its senior manage management debarred from ever holding any public office again. Well, why don't we get rid of them? All right. Okay, thank you. That was wonderful. Listen, way to go, Lord Monkey. Awesome. Mm. But, you know, why don't we just abolish their rear end? Anyway, why does it have to be, if you don't do this, let her graze on the land, then we're going to get rid of you. But if you let her graze, but if you grant grant her the right to graze there, then uh, everything's cool and you can stay in existence. You need to understand, Lord Moncton is not from the United States of America. Yeah, I know. I see that. There's a, there's a, this is, I know. So I I love him. He's a nice, he is for, he is for abolishing uh, Bureau of Land Management because he is one of the major players behind exposing the UN Agenda 21 um, and all of that on a international scale. 
So okay, good. What well, I good. Am you know, we need all the about, help. We need right. all the help we can get. And what I'm tickled about, the good news is, is the big names are now finally catching on and speaking out, and and that's the important. The, the most important thing here, yes. not no, only speaking that is out, they're getting really, active, yes. and that's awesome. Yep. Um, so there is something else I want to report. If everybody has your pen and pencils ready, please write this down. I am sure that this will be covered live by someone. I will not personally be in Las Vegas, Nevada, but um, hopefully John Lamb maybe will be out in that area to be able to do this. July the 15th, 2017. There is a stand-up for the Bundy Ranchers Rally. It is being held at 6 p.m. at Rainbow Gardens in Las Vegas, Nevada. Roger Stone, yes, you heard me correctly, Roger Stone, who helped President Donald Trump before he became president with his presidential campaign, is one of the ones behind this. He is going to be there. Sean Stone is going to be there. Adam Kokesh is going to be there. Former Congressman Ron Paul is going to be there. If you can be there, please be there. There are finally, finally some really big names getting behind this. They are speaking of the indefinite, the uh, detention of them without bond, the unlawful holding of them. Oh, God, Um, it's about time. Beautiful. It is. It is. Now, um, I have uh, a uh, copy of Roger Stone speaking this for himself in the process of uploading to my YouTube so individuals can see it. It is not just word of mouth. It is him himself putting that out. StoneColdTruth.com is the one who actually originally put that clip out with uh, Roger Stone. So you can also find that on Facebook. And, of course, every time I do any kind of thing on YouTube, everyone knows I always put the source links below in the description box. However, I felt like that was really good news for everybody because we have been uh, really fighting the battle. And the, the fake news, the real fake news, has finally um, been exposed, and that has really been one of the reasons the inf- independent investigative journalists and, and people such as Tom Lacavera Stewart and such as Pete Santilli and, and such as Gary Hunt and the other individuals who fight for truth and who fight for really getting the information out to the people that is not skewed um, with false narratives out there to the people – this is going to be huge, in my opinion, and anybody and everybody who can get there, I would certainly suggest to get there. Um, yes, yeah, Laura. Also, add to that that list. You can add also add uh, to your list. Uh, Larry Clayman from Judicial Watch is also doing a Clive and Bundy awareness campaign with the donate page and all that stuff. So that's pretty good. Ron Paul, that's Larry awesome. Clayman. Um, I'm not the biggest Roger Stone fan. I, I, I just don't, you know, I, I won't go there right now. But God bless him if he's putting the Clive and Bundy thing to the forefront. It's about time. I do not want I've yeah. been screaming about this for a year and a half. And that yeah. I did not want to be the only one out there. It doesn't give me any singular notoriety to be just the only guy flapping in the wind screaming. There are a few others, you know, but not many. And all the big, bigger fish, you know, were, were suspiciously silent on that. On this right. whole uh, Bundy thing, you know, they were there, and I would, I would just say it was probably about eighty to ninety percent of the people who were at the Bundy standoff, you know, at the at the ranch, at the, originally at the cattle ranch, you know, when they got their cattle back. Uh, mm-hmm. Eighty to ninety percent of those have fled the whole thing. I mean, where's Oath Keepers? I don't see them out protesting mm-hmm. any of this outside the prison. I want to see more right. of them. And by the way, it's nice to have Ron Paul. And uh, Clayman and even uh, Roger Stone, but where, where's Trump Sessions? And, uh, you know, once again, the right. swamp well, was drained and news. refilled with fresh feces. And, and I understand that. I do know that um, he was out of country. I don't know if he's in back in country right now. Uh, I haven't even followed up on that as well, of yet. Got, but I do know problem. this. I got to I got to jump in. This is, we got this is a big problem. He should not. We got all kinds of problems here. 
with the mm-hmm. massive, mm-hmm. massive, massive Patriot Roundup, Patriot persecution, mm-hmm. and here's, well, I heard all about it. It was going to be years ago, and then nothing happened. And now that it's happening, where is everybody talking about the Patriots getting rounded up? It's happening now. The FEMA camp is where Chris was. The FEMA camp is Las Vegas, Correction Corporation of America, where the fundies are being tortured as we speak. This is Eric Dupree. I'm streamer with Lori Anderson and Chris in Las Vegas. We'll be back for another half hour. Hang with us. This is the RBN Network. Please support the network, won't you? Do it monthly. You are tuned in to the Republic Broadcasting Network. Visit our website by going to republicbroadcasting.org. Folks, we're living in a world the likes of which we've never perceived any clearer than we do now. The plan for global governance has been in the works for generations and would have likely been achieved by now, but for the fact that the globalists left open their Achilles heel. With all their tools, Federal Reserve System, fiat currency, no child left behind, and then common core education introduced to our schools to dumb us down, vaccines, pharmaceuticals to lobotomize us, GMO foods, insertion of compromised or bought and paid for politicians, judges, mainstream media propaganda, all pieced together like a puzzle designed to ultimately bring the world under submission. But with all their strategy, they forgot one thing, knowledge. And knowledge is power. With knowledge, their bombardment is nullified. Folks, with that, as brilliant and knowledgeable as you've become, among the wisest audience of any radio audience in the world, and you are, I want you to take a moment to reflect and ask yourself, how much of that knowledge did I obtain from Republic Broadcasting Network? How high has my consciousness been raised since I've been a listener? How fast am I now able to discriminate truth from fake news by being a Republic Broadcasting listener? How clear am I now able to see the world since I've been listening to RBN? Ask yourselves those questions, folks. Then ask yourself, what is that knowledge worth to me? Like my morning coffee, how would I survive without it? A voice of truth and a sea of lies. Do we not all need to make sure it survives? Like public broadcasting, we are now finding we can only survive with listener support. Censorship, advertisers being attacked, truth itself being attacked. It's the only way through this. We at Republic Broadcasting humbly ask you to become a supporter. Look at your budget and make a determination of what Republic Broadcasting is worth to you and what you can afford on a monthly basis. Go to republicbroadcasting.org and pledge 20, 30, 40, 50, if possible, 100 a month or more if it's affordable. Click the Donate button and become a regular monthly donor. Assure both us and yourself that Republic Broadcasting Truth will continue to flow like that morning coffee. The network thanks you. Without the right accessories, any guy can be off the mark. Whether you've invested thousands in your arsenal or you own a single trusted firearm, a visit to aroutfitting.com is in order. It's one of the finest online selections of tactical optics and AR parts and add-ons, like EOTech, quick target acquisition with no peripheral loss. Browse the full range of Nikon scopes and binoculars. Airoutfitting.com can illuminate your world with streamlight gun-mounted lights from keychain to large handhelds up to 1,100 lumens. Find some stability with Battenfield Tactical Bipods. Airoutfitting.com has CMMG gun parts, barrels, assemblies, handguards, part kits, and more. Plus magful clips and magazines. I know I've got you excited, so take a breath. Head to Airoutfitting.com. The site's super easy to navigate and features a ton of technical info, including links to manuals. We also welcome vendor and manufacturer inquiries. Remember, if you don't see it, we can get it at Airoutfitting.com. Homeowners, if your lender has gone out of business or sold your transaction to another lender or servicer, you may be the victim of a wrongful foreclosure resulting in the loss of your home. If you've already lost your home, are in foreclosure, or even in good standing, you can challenge the mortgage transaction's illegal issue, and your property can be restored to you, and your foreclosure can be stopped or reversed, and the mortgage transaction declared unenforceable. State laws, U.S. title codes, the Uniform Commercial Codes, and U.S. Supreme Court rulings have upheld that defective mortgage documentations can reverse or stop foreclosures and enforce property title claims in favor of the homeowner. We are having successes in stopping the process of foreclosure, the enforcement of the foreclosure judgments, the sale of property, and evictions after the sale. We are not attorneys, and we don't give legal advice. We are a professional team of legal researchers, providing forensic mortgage audits and expert witnesses. We have the knowledge to produce the evidence and enforce laws regarding your legal issues. We've been in business for 12 years without a complaint. Consultations are free, and we provide a free title search to confirm if your mortgage has legal defects. Please call 855-253-3748. 855, the number 2, keep it today.
Welcome back, my friend. Thank you for joining us on the American Awakening. This is the RBN Network. I'm Eric the Freedom Screamer. Let's get right back into it. We got two callers. We got Lori Anderson. We got Chris in Las Vegas. We're talking about political persecutions tonight. Really good news. Chris is out of the psychiatric ward. As you can see tonight, he's in perfect control of his facilities. He's a really smart guy. He knows the common law. He knows court case precedent. He knows how to file documents. He knows how to resist tyranny. He knows history. <clears throat> Boy, what a model American and what a great threat to the witch's court and the whole nasty, disgusting, antichrist system that we're living under. So I want to thank uh, Chris for you going through that two months of suffering. I mean, he did that for all of us. Chris yeah, stand and forward wanna... and, and really participated. And, and uh, yeah, did you have a comment on that, Lori? And then we're going to try to get I to do. our callers. Thanks for I do. Callers. Um, because 18 U.S. Code 2340, because they love their codes. Let me define torture for the listeners who do not know the legal definition of torture so that you can really understand that Chris was tortured, so that you can understand that the patriots are being tortured, so that you can understand the independent investigative journalists are being tortured. The legal definition for torture in 18 U.S. Code 2340, you can look it up yourself. Torture means an act committed by a person acting under the color of law, specifically intended to inflict severe physical or mental pain or suffering, other than pain or suffering incidental to lawful sanctions, upon other person within his custody or physical control. Severe mental pain or suffering means the prolonged mental harm caused by or resulting from the intentional infliction or threatened infliction of severe physical pain or suffering, the administration or application or threatened administration or application of mind-altering substances or other procedures calculated to disrupt profoundly the senses or the personality. The threat of imminent death or the threat that another person will imminently be subjected to death, severe physical pain or suffering, or the administration or application of mind-altering substances or other procedures calculated to disrupt profoundly the senses or personality and United States means the several states of the United States, the District of Columbia, and the Commonwealth's territories and possessions of the United States. How much clearer can that be under their own definition of torture? They have inflicted severe mental pain and suffering to uh, Chris as well as the political prisoners in the, in the Bundy situation and many other people around the United States of America that we have reported on and some we probably don't even know about. They have also inflicted severe physical pain. Ammon Bundy, when he was in that shower stall for 13 hours because he refused to agree to once again be unlawfully Searched. When we're talking about their search, we're not talking about a regular search. We're talking about body cavity searches as well. We're talking about searches that if any other person were to do that, it could be constituted as rape. Now you need to think about that. That is not okay here in the United States of America. For anybody. Now, we understand that if you are being locked up, okay, there are certain reasons to have a body cavity search in the beginning. You've been inside this prison. You are under the watchful eye of the prison guards. You have not gone outside of the prison. You have been shackled and are in solitary confinement. So the reality Yeah, I know. I, is, I heard, it's ridiculous. They used to do it four times a day to the Bundys when they hadn't even left the site of the marshals. It was insane. It was strictly torture. They're doing that, it. And Chris, right. Chris, do you want to and share with us what happened when the uh, 
Chris at one point refused to take a blood draw right. and uh, went back to his room. And what happened, Chris, about 40 minutes after you got back to your room and refused to let them stick you with the needle? Tell us. Well, it was actually supposedly a tuberculosis test, and I had three previously, and they all proved negative, and they tried to insist on a fourth one. I was very concerned that too many tests could likely cause tuberculosis, so I refused to consent. They became airy, enraged, hostile, threatened to call the health department authorities for my non-compliance, non-consent, and so I went back to my room, and I laid down, face down on my little bed. It was not my room, it was a cell. Uh, where I was being held hostage, and I was reading a book, and I fell off to sleep. Well, I was awakened and, and terrorized by six big guards coming in, uh, including the lieutenant, grabbed my arm, sat on my head and my body. I was overwhelmed. I'm 65, almost 66-year-old ADA man, and they completely immobilized me, held my arm out, and forcibly inject me with a some sort of a hypodermic needle with some sort of uh, medical concoction in there, which is assault with a deadly weapon of bioterrorism. And so I piled a complaint with Lynn Bigley of Nevada Disability Associates Law Firm up there in their advocacy group. I don't know what's happening with that. I'm going to follow up on that probably tomorrow. Uh, but... They absolutely retaliated with a really uh, discriminatory class-based animus trying to per se execute this individual for merely exercising my lawful right to refuse to consent to being forcibly injected or tested or having other medical procedures performed on me without any substantive reason, no threat to anybody else's safety or security or the national security. is strictly preposterous. And it was absolutely done to terrorize me and try to dissuade me from further resistant and perhaps belligerent as they present behavior of being sensible, cogent, and conscient and not consenting. Ungodly. Let's go to our callers. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, can you, and, and listen, this is going on under the Trump administration. I didn't hear it this bad under Obama. Nothing has changed. We need intervention at the highest levels. I'm demanding it right now. So let's go to our callers. Who do we have? Was it, uh, who was first, Mike? Who's ever first will take that. Was it Mike in Kentucky? And then we had somebody else. Go ahead, Mike. Did we lose him? You got another caller? Feel free to bring them up. Otherwise, let's go back to Chris and Lori. How are you doing, my friend? Oh. How are Hi, you? Andy, oh. How are you? I'm doing fine. Doesn't sound like you guys are doing very good. You got your mindset uh, well outside of the realm of the uh, uh, let's just call them hypnotized individuals. Um, my first question, I got a couple of things I want to ask, but my first question is to Chris. Uh, having been put into a psychiatric ward and whatnot, how does this affect your Second Amendment now? Well, I'm falsely arrested, falsely indicted. Uh, it, it would absolutely destroy me. They're trying to indict me for a federal offense, claiming I resisted a public officer, when I, all I did was advise him of his due process of law, giving him notice or an opportunity to cease and desist their criminal theft of my private property in violation of the Fifth Amendment takings protections without just compensation. Their paperwork was simulated sham legal fictitious service of process. It was not lawful. I advised them of that. And that's what they termed resisting an officer. If you can pervert the word term resist to incorporate giving due process of law mandated notice to cease and desist to a law enforcement supposed professional or private foreign corporate mercenary, that they're endangering themselves, they're becoming culpable, liable, and suitable for breaking the law. It's a clear known maximum law that you cannot break the law to enforce the law. And all I like to, I to do was to properly advise him and give him an opportunity to cease and desist, but he re decided to go through with uh, rational exuberance. So to answer so, your so, question, he was found competent. So that's Okay, but 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 so so the end result is it's still up in the air as to whether or not you can own a weapon after all this is over with. Although it does sound like you're in the winning circle right now. 
Well, I've got so many defects in their processes. When they first served me the complaint, the call called ratification of commencement, where they have to have the complaint and the affidavit, the complaint wasn't signed by anybody to accept culpability, liability, and suitability for their false claims. Uh, that's a fatal defect in the service of process. It didn't have an affidavit determinant with it. It's required by Rule 4M of the Federal Rules of Evidence for proper service, and therefore it was a non-proper service whatsoever, and the indictment was done in some secret with the uh, chief of the county commission, Steve Sisolak, his daughter, pretending to represent me when he was, she was really her representing her father and throwing me under the bus and waving my rights without my knowledge, consent, acquiescence, or even awareness that she was doing it. Did you get that, folks? They appointed the daughter of the county commissioner, okay? The county commissioner is the guy stealing Chris's expensive, rare Dodge Hemi, and they appointed his daughter... The daughter of the thief got appointed over Chris, the victim, over the victim's case. Isn't that precious? Well, it, it seems like these people are very good at distorting words. I mean, I'm not even sure what was is when I'm sitting in a courtroom or is is when I get in the courtroom. They distort the words and whatnot. And one of the things that's really uh, relevant to this thing is, A, if if we really lived in a constitutional republic, God, I wish I did. But if we did, the, the BLM, the CIA, the FBI, and all this NSA and all this stuff, this wouldn't exist because there's no... Uh, coordination to, to it in the Constitution. So that's just a sign of where we're at. But just to share something that I had, uh, I had a little municipal thing, you know, a, a misdemeanor thing going on in the courtroom, and I, I insisted on defending myself, and I gave my discovery to them. They gave me their discovery, and my discovery was based on a Fourth Amendment right violation. And so I show up to the courtroom, and I didn't get a chance to, you know, pick out my uh, uh, peers that are going to be on this six-man jury and whatnot. So when I first, you know, they wanted opening statements, the prosecutor goes on about how bad I am, and then I get to get up and ask. And I'm like, well, Your Honor, I'd like to ask some very personal questions to these uh, these six uh, peers of mine. And, uh, and he's like, well, what are these questions regarding? And I was like, well, I want to know if they know what my rights are. And he said, that's irrelevant to this case. I said, excuse me? Have you read my discovery? Boom. Contempt of court. They wouldn't even let me, they wouldn't even let me find out if these people knew my rights and my whole case was based on my rights. And so I found out that it was an RCW code, that's Washington State, RCW code. It was a UCC commercial code courtroom. I didn't stand a chance from the minute I got in there. And so I just walked away. They, they threatened to revoke my bell and everything. And I said, you know what, revoke my bell, catch me if you can, and I walked away. And so I, I really don't care about this country right now. I love the beauty of the land and stuff, but my government can go suck weeds, man. I, I really don't care for these people. And what's happening to the Bundys, what happened to LaVoy Finnegan, it, it is all ridiculous. There's absolutely no way in this world that these people, that, that, how can we let this happen? And here's the part that really bugs me the most. We've got all of these uh, so-called uh, patriots out there, but we're so chicken butt to get together and do something about this. We're all afraid there's somebody infiltrating us. We're always afraid that if we finally come together and just march down these people's throats, that somehow we're not going to be successful. And do you think the people who got our freedom in the first place, if they thought like that, would we have ever had a constitution? They did afford us the freedoms that we have and protect those freedoms? No, we would have never had that. These people weren't chicken. Now, granted, they didn't have cell phones to track us and infiltrators and what. They did have infiltrators, but they didn't have infiltrators that could infiltrate so easily because of the technology. But we really, really, really have to come together here very, very shortly and end this. I mean, the Declaration of Independence specifically states that if this government should ever become a tor torment to us again, and this is, you know, not verbatim, but we have the right to overthrow it, and it's our duty to overthrow it. And I'll be damned, I'm sitting here waiting for this to happen. You know, when one guy goes out and does something, it's terrorism. But if you've got a million people marching on these people with guns and weapons and everything saying, no, this is it, we're fixing this, that's a whole other story. Certainly is.
we do have the right to alter or abolish when the government becomes so oppressive that it can be no longer deemed a lawful government of, for, and by the people. Mm-hmm. If we were long well, since passed that one, we're uh, above, by, and for the corporation. The country has been already declared bankrupt. Everybody's been declared a citizen, which is a subject. They've taken all the property back under Eshiot and property tax statutes. Um, they got us under full communist occupation right now. And the solution? Um, the self-governing county and buy local, fix local. And that leads into the self-governing county. Buy local, fix local. Get yourself out of the, divest yourself from the system. I read the list the other night. Hundreds, dozens, if not hundreds of corp- companies, corporations, financial investment firms, insurance banks, name it. All profiting all from a private pr- prison facility that's torturing the Bundys as we speak. Oh, absolutely, and I've been, well, I, I, I've been I've been spreading what you said the other night, the list of these people, I've been spreading it around. It's just, it's amazing because all these people stand to gain from this, and anytime you can turn a prison for profit, I mean, there's incentive everywhere, and if we dig even deeper, we're going to find out the pension funds of the judges sentencing you to these uh, courts, or the, to these uh, prisons, you're going to find that they're That's profiting too. Did. No, we already did. Sessions. The retirement system of Alabama is invested, heavily invested in CCA, Correction Corporation of America. Guess who is drawing a pension check every month from the retirement system? Oh, Jeff system Sessions. Of Alabama? Jeff Sessions. There you go. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> oh, guess who? Is? Yeah. And by the way, the governor has recently been indicted for sex crimes. Guess who his attorney general was covering for him, making sure that the governor didn't get indicted while he was in office. Uh, Jeff Sessions, uh, who's going to yep. make the drug war bigger, Jeff Sessions, um, you know, who, who, Mr. Drug Warrior, war against his own people. Boy, if he can just keep that one going, the New World Order will love Donald Trump, and they will love Jeff Sessions. Well, I want to say well, this, too, because I was digging uh, into, of course, the private prisons, and I went on NASDAQ, and I think, and I'm, I'm going to give benefit of that out to some of the companies, Um that engage in buying these stocks. Let me tell you why. Because if you read into their paperwork, if you go forward, not not CCA itself, I can't remember the other individual. I will have to look that up because I'm not even going to guess and say a wrong name. Um, but it was part of the private prison system. But what they do is on their stocks, where where they're selling their stocks, they list it as real estate. And so some of these people, and I'm not saying all of them, but I'm saying some of them really could truly think that they're investing in real estate stocks, but the reality is it's the private prison system. Well, 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 there's there's plenty of useful idiots at the bottom that just don't know, but this is why I want to bring it to them and say, hey, guess what? Sorry to inform you, but you're invested in the torture chamber. Um, just thought you'd want to know what you do with it is now your business. If you want to make an adjustment, great. If well, not, you've already now you've just the crucial fork in the road. When a man or right, woman who I, is mistaken, here's the truth. They either cease being mistaken or they cease being honest. Right. And so what I thought would be a good idea, and I've been looking into this and, of course, digging. And, of course, you know, Eric, as well as I do, and uh, the listeners who know me know that I'm not going to put anything out unless I have solid-backed, hardcore evidence to back it up. And so I'm waiting to get a compiled list that I know for a fact, and then people, uh, companies that are actually invested in it, and then I'm going to get the, the names and addresses and phone numbers of the CEOs, and put it together to where there can be a writing campaign, not rude, nice. professional, Excellent. to inform them that this is listed as real estate. But are you aware that this is what is going on? This is what you are actually invested in. And we request that you pull and and get rid of the shares that is promoting the torture of the American people now, don't forget, up. you're going to be sending a lot of letters to the White House or, or per, its peripheral agents because Goldman Sachs 
owns over a 1.5 million shares. I think it's 1.755 million shares of CCA and Goldman Sachs. It, oh, Wells Fargo. Just reek to, to you. Oh, yeah. throughout the Trump administration, oh, well, yeah. like like grab all the banks, yeah. grab all the banks, and find out how many shares they have. But you know well, what bank, you were saying. Bank, almost every bank in existence was on the list. M and T, Citizens Bank, exactly, Wells Fargo, exactly. Bank, bank of America. Uh, oh, 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 even the World oh, Bank of way. England. Yep. The Royal, well, the Royal Bank of Canada was on there, and that's nothing more than an arm of the Bank of England right there. That's close enough. Exactly. Well, I, opened up one of the, I don't think I told you this, Lori. I opened up, I was looking through the list, on, and I saw GSA advisors, and I said, GSA, I wonder if that's the General Services Administration that's bonding all the court cases on the witch's court. So I opened up GSA. So I opened up, guess who, the, guess who owns GSA, which owns mm. corporate corporate. Carl Icahn, Warren Buffett, George Soros Fund. Yeah, let's take okay. the caller. Andy, we're going to skate. Call us again when I'm on. We're going to get one more caller in. Let's go for Thank it. Sir. Who do we got? Uh, Eric. Yes, sir. Eric? Uh, yes. Can you succinctly uh, tell us how a, um, a conviction adds to the um, uh, court uh, you know, a court that's in this, uh, in that position, or a corporation, because the courts Absolutely. are a corporation. How does it add to their, yeah, to their success? Right. Yeah, in the I pay of the it judge. Right in front of me, I just saw it today. Where is it? Uh, it's in. Uh, oh, let's see if I have the right book or not. GSA bonding forms. Yes, at sentencing. Where is it here? Um, da 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 da. The process is accused of. Hold on one second. Surety Bond, I'm going to get to this in well, a you're, second. Well, you're yep. looking for that, Eric. It's important to note that there was a big event this week with the FBI uh, having one of their agents, his last name was Astorita. I don't remember the first name. It's on OregonLive.com. You can go Google or search out FBI uh, agent arrested in the Boy Finicum shooting. Apparently yep. he lied okay. on his uh, testimony. And he actually fired two shots. They confirmed, and so therefore he's up on charges for perjuring himself on the stand oh, in an official boy. proceeding. But surprise, you notice surprise. they only did it government. for the perjury and not yeah, government agents, the conspiracy. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Oh, I know. We're waiting for yeah, that. Right. That's a problem I have, Lori. Is the charges aren't severe enough. Here we go. Um, bonds that are issued must be indemnified. This is done when the prisoner signs the final court papers at a sentencing hearing. That's how they benefit from convictions. That's from freedomschool.com. Um, how about nielsenbonds.com? Providing the nation's most comprehensive surety bond programs, condo associations, fidelity bonds, construction license bonds, consumer credit so, repair, court bonds, fidelity bonds applications, etc. So, so you, Emma, you, this you, is one of my favorite. This is one of my so favorite surety bonds. The defendant, bonds well, Eric, hold on. He has a question, hon. Okay. Yeah. So the defendant it, it trusts trust this uh, court, which is not going to, it's going to basically always want to convict the defendant. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. Well, it think about correct. it like this. Think about it like this. You have a judge that is a bar attorney. You have the prosecutor that is a bar attorney, and you have your defense is bar attorney. Uh -huh. They swear allegiance to the bar. Where is Every one your of them. due process? Yep. The judge, the, 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 the district attorney, the defense attorney, the public pretender, and the attorney whores down at the county legislature building right next door, which are passing all those bogus, fake, made-up statutes. Every single one of them, a member of the same club called the Bar, would all of them have an Esquire next to their name. That's treason because it's an English title matters. of nobility. Yes, it is. So, BLM, listen. Bar Lives Matter. Well, thank you. Absolutely. So, I, yeah, I, so, I, I, I know, I know that the pay of these judges is dependent on the uh, success of the corporation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and and the success and promotions of their career. It's more about power, really, than it is about money. They're looking for the get up, the climb up that ladder to the supreme witch's court. 
We'll talk more about this next time we're on. I want to thank Lori Anderson for being with us. Great perspective. Appreciate it. I want to thank Chris okay. Cave in Las Vegas. Chris, it's great to have you out. Chris is out of the psychiatric hospital. No longer Soviet Union incarceration for Chris, but he's still got a battle to fight. Follow it at courtroomwatch.com. I'm Eric the Freedom Screamer. Thanks to all the callers and everybody. We appreciate everyone participating. Please support the network and do it on a monthly basis, even if it's a little bit. It really helps keep information like this up and running. Thanks to all the bigger fish like Ron Paul and Larry Clayman and Alex Jones for bringing it to the front and everybody who's finally talking about the Bundys. We Absolutely. had some silence there for a while, and I'm glad we're not the only ones flopping in the wind. Let's bring it more and more to everybody's attention Homeowners, for persecution for of patriots in the U.S. And as always, everyone, watch your backs, check your facts. Semper Fidelis, and have a wonderful night.